Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the worship service. Thank you for the ministries of all those who have ministered to us from the beginning of the service, from the children to the youth to the adults. We're asking, Lord, you bless their ministry to our souls in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that every blessing you have for us today, none of us will miss your blessing. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to 1 Peter chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 3. We're reading from verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. As we look at verses 1 through to 7, we'll see that the Lord is talking to the family through the pain, inspired pain of the Apostle Peter. God instituted marriage. God created man and the woman and God ordained the family. And the Lord wants us to go back and have the blessing of the early family so that all the consequences of the curse will be removed from every family and from your family in Jesus' name. And whatever might have happened in the past, in our families, in your family or in my family, the Lord is going to repair everything. He's going to build us a new home, a new father, a new mother, new children, a new family in Jesus' name. Each Christian home can be built up. Each Christian home can have a good, godly, happy, progressive, heavenly family. All we need is the word of God's grace. And the grace will be manifested in every life, even today in Jesus' name. As we look at these verses before us, we're looking at the message building our homes on the bedrock of inward beauty. Building our homes on the bedrock, on the solid foundation of inward beauty. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the inner beauty of a virtuous wife. A virtuous wife is beautiful. But the beauty is from inside, and then it comes to the outside. The inner beauty of a virtuous wife. Point number two, the internal backbone of a vibrant husband. A husband that is not weak. A husband with a backbone. A husband whose internal backbone is vibrant and healthy and supportive. Point number three, the inside bank of a visionary home. There's a kind of bank that we have on the inside. And when we have any need, we can draw out of that bank and meet the need of the family. The inside bank of a visionary home. Point number one, the inner beauty of a virtuous wife. As we're saved by the grace of God, we're cleansed by Christ, we're sanctified, 
as a Christian, a definite Christian experience, the woman becomes a virtuous lady, a virtuous wife, a virtuous mother, a virtuous homemaker. And the apostle, by the Spirit, is pointing out to us what a virtuous wife will possess that makes her beautiful. Number one, a winsome character. A winsome character. The beauty that reflects from the inside makes her beautiful and winsome. Look at verses 1 and 2 of um, 1 Peter chapter 3. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation, by the lifestyle, by the character of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation, while they behold your attractive lifestyle, coupled with fear, coupled with reverence. You see, men might be difficult. A husband might be difficult. An unbelieving husband might be difficult. And yet God has enough grace for the winsome wife for the character of a virtuous woman to draw that husband to Christ and to herself. It's saying that a virtuous woman, a virtuous wife, who is beautiful from the, out, from the inside, will not drive the husband away. Although the husband might seem tough and tyrannical, yet the character, winsome character, beautiful character, loving character, submissive character, instead of driving the man away, will draw the man to Christ. And not only drawing him to Christ, will draw him to that wife. Such a wonderful character we find in Romans chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 15, verse 1. We then that are stronger, it's talking about being strong by grace. It's talking about the wife now in the context of what we're reading. That you are strong because of the grace of God. You see heaven ahead because of the grace of God. And you have got something that makes you strong in conviction, strong in character, by the grace of God. But your husband has not seen that, has not known that. And it says the very first thing you are going to manifest, you are going to manifest that strength and you bear the infirmities of your weak husband. And not to please ourselves, let every one of us please his neighbor. In particular now, let every wife please her husband for his good to edification. He might think that you are so submissive because now you have gone to church. He might think you are sheepish because you have gone to church. He might think that now you are humble and your humility now he can ride on you because of what he sees you're doing it for a purpose and your character with some character is going to make him think and say this woman was not like this before the christ who has made a change in this woman will make a change in me it will happen Verse 3, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Christ, your Lord and Master, please not himself. So don't think that in your family, 
you're going to give it to the husband and please yourself and bring him down and run him down after all he's not a good husband you will have a winsome character we're coming back to first peter chapter three number two the second mark of a winsome wife a virtuous wife is a compatible outward cleanliness compatible outward cleanliness look at verse 3 first peter chapter 3 verse 3 who's adorning let it not be that outward adorning or plating the air of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel when it says or putting on of apparel you understand it's not saying that you will not dress yourself it's not saying you will not have a pleasing appearance it's talking about moderation here and it says not gold that one is definite for the christian wife and it's not adorned by the hairstyle of the people of the world that one is clear for a child of god as you read the whole of the new testament but he's saying you'll still be presentable i'm reading from revelation chapter 21 verse 2 revelation chapter 21 verse 2 and i john saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Adorned for her husband. It's the same Bible. It's saying that you'll still have good outward appearance that will still be clear and nice and presentable before your husband. You are adorned don't for your husband not for the world if it were for the world you'll dress to please the world you'll put on this and put on that to please the world but you will please your husband you will not dress shabbily you will not appear deliberately ugly and deliberately unkempt you'll have compatible outward cleanliness number three we're coming back to first peter chapter three and i'm reading from verse four a meek and quiet spirit you see this is what makes the wife beautiful this is what makes the wife acceptable to the husband and the husband would always think i don't think i can ever find a better wife than this my present wife I don't think I can ever find a more compatible wife more than this my present wife look at what makes her virtuous what makes her winsome I'm looking at verse 4 first Peter chapter 3 verse 4 but let it be the hidden man of the heart is saying that as you take care of your outside appearance outward appearance and you are presentable to your husband look at the inward aspect as well and make sure that if this on the outside outward will please my husband if i can make the effort and if i can do it and make myself beautiful to my husband I can do it on the inside too. I can have the grace of God too. I can have the favor of God too. And have a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Look at chapter 3, verse 15. Verse 15 of 1 Peter. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Every time, take care of the heart. Your heart, your spirit can betray you. If somebody is angry in the heart, it will ooze out. Your heart 
will betray you on your face. If somebody is difficult, difficult to live with, difficult to interact with, if it's there in the heart, it will show in the action. It will show that she wants to start a fight. She wants to start a conflict. She wants the husband to see this and hear this and react so that there can be a fight. A virtuous wife will not do that. You'll carry in your bosom meekness, gentleness, as well as a quiet spirit. Verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you of a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. That's applicable to everybody, in particular to the wife. We come to number four. You have a trusting disposition. A trusting disposition. There might be a problem. You are not going to say immediately there is a problem. That's what I'm saying. Things should not be like this. If you were paying all the bills, if you were doing your assignment, if you were doing everything you ought to do in the family, will not have this kind of a mayhem and this kind of conflict in the family. You have a trusting disposition. Look at verse 5. For after this manner, in old time, holy women also trusted in God. Trusted in God. Any challenge, trust in God. Any problem, trust in God. We're still waiting to have children, trust in God. It appears that enough money is not coming in, trust in God. It appears that things are difficult now in particular for us in our nucleus family, in our, in our family, trust in God. Holy women, you believe in holiness, then trust in God. You profess to be sanctified and trust in God. It is that trust in God that will never complain. It is that trust in God that will not murmur. It is that trust in God that will not look down on your husband. When things are hard and when things are difficult, you'll not allow your own parents to stir you up against your husband just because things are difficult. What is difficult today will become easy tomorrow. This country we see today will become you have surplus tomorrow. A trusting disposition. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. If anyone is barren here, barrenness will go away. We don't get children by fighting one another in the family. If there's a delay of a particular blessing in the family, the blessing will not come by fighting, by conflict. Look at Abraham and Sarah. And Sarah was not accusing Abraham you are the cause of the barrenness. You are an old man. And look at you now who is going to have a child through you. When you talk to your husband, understand you are the angel in the home. Speak like an angel. And speak like a virtuous woman. Whatever the problem may be, watch this uh, Egyptians that you see today. You will not see them tomorrow in Jesus' name. She received strength herself to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. The Lord has promised us you will not lack. And everything your family lacks, the Lord will supply in Jesus' name. 
Number five is submissive conduct. A submissive conduct. We're coming back to First Peter chapter 3. And I'm reading from the second part of verse 5. Who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And that word calling is in the continuous tense. It's not that, you know, in the Greek language, in the which in which the New Testament was written, there are some actions, some verbs. They take place once and for all, full stop. Others took place in the past and no more. But there are some tenses in the Greek that the way it's constructed is happening and happening and happening. In the day, it's going on. In the night, it's going on. When the weather is cool, that action is going on. When the weather is hot, that, that uh, action is going on. That's what he's saying here. You have a submissive conduct morning, afternoon, and night. When things, when there's heat, when there's cold, when you are not happy, now understand, there may be something that happens that makes you unhappy. You're a human being. But being unhappy doesn't mean being unholy. We can retain our holiness even when it appears we're unhappy about something. Calling him Lord. You retain the good language. You retain the good name. You retain the good title, you call him. You don't change your language, language of honor, language of respect, language of submission, and the language that you used when you were happy, you continue with that language, calling him Lord. Number six, irrespective tongue. Irrespecting a tongue. A tongue in the language of her mouth the husband the wife talking to the husband the wife talking about the husband the wife talking before the husband behind the husband a language of respect look at verse 6 even as Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye are, ye do well and are not afraid of any amazement. Afraid of any amazement. Proverbs chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 4. Proverbs chapter 12. Let's read from verse 4. It says in verse 4, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh her shame is as rottenness in his bones. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. She knows how to talk. She knows what to say. And she knows how to quench the fire and to put off the fire by the words of her mouth. Look at the opposite in Psalm 12. Psalm 12, verse 4. I've read to you Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4. Look at the other side in Psalm 12, verse 4. Who have said... With our tongue will we prevail. Our leaves are our own, who is Lord over us. There are people that speak in such a way as to tear the whole house down. 
they speak and the words are piercing and the words seem to say I'm a woman of myself I'm a woman of my own idea I speak and let what will be be whatever will happen let it happen a person who wants to build a home a good home a loving home does not act like that does not behave like that but she speaks with the words that will meant not the words that will man in proverbs chapter 15 reading from verse 1 proverbs chapter 15 verse 1 is soft answer turneth away wrath a soft answer turneth away wrath verse 2 the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright you use your tongue as a repairing tool you use your tongue as a beautiful tattoos truth that will help the family to move forward and then it says in verse 3 the eyes of the lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good a wholesome tongue is a tree of life that's what the tongue of a virtuous wife will be in a family number one a winsome character Number two, a compatible outward cleanliness. Number three, a meek and quiet spirit. Number four, a trusting disposition. Number five, a submissive conduct. Number six, a respectful tongue. Number seven, a helpful support. Helpful support. Look at First Peter. First Peter chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. First Peter chapter 3, we're reading from verse 7. It's talking about the husband and he makes allusion to the wife. In verse 7, likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel talking about the wife as being heirs together of the grace of life help us of the grace of life inheriting together the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered the man is praying the husband is praying the wife will be a helpful support and do well to the husband and make the husband well prepared and ready to pray prevailing prayer you will not say as a wife i know when to torture him i know when to turn his mind away from the business of the day and i know when to disturb him is going to set a patch time to pray and is praying on something that is on top of his heart at that time i will know how to hinder the prayer he wins some wife a virtuous wife will not do that you are supposed wives are supposed to be help meets for the husband in proverbs chapter 31 proverbs chapter 31 i read from verse 12 it says she will do him good do well and not evil all the days of her life she the virtuous woman she the virtuous wife will do him good how many days sisters i said how many days all the days of your life come back to verse 10 who can find a virtuous woman only those who pray who can find a virtuous wife 
only those who seek guidance from the Lord, who can find a virtuous woman, only those who are not walking by sight, who can find a virtuous woman, for her price is above rubies. The heart of her husband does simply trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. The man is not being extra careful, being extra watchful, because she knows she has a protecting wife. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and walketh willingly with her hands. Hard walking wife. She will not say, well, he is the breadwinner. If he is not bringing money to the family and were to die of hunger, let it be. I'm not going to touch anything. That's why I married him, so that I can be lazy and not do anything. No, she seeketh wool and flask and walketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night. That is, she rises up early in the morning and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Uh, that family seems to have maids that are serving them. And she makes sure she provides for the husband for the children, for the maids, adequately at the appropriate time. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. Sometimes there is space behind the house. And instead of having to go and buy this and buy this and buy that every time, she has a garden of vegetables at the back of the house. She's resourceful. She gathers her loins, verse 17, with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. She's selling something that is needed in the community. She is uh, so resourceful, she will find out what can I do to augment the resources of the family. A candle goes not out by night. Your candle will not go out by night. The winds of adversity will not put up the light of your family in Jesus' name. That verse is saying she supplies enough oil to the lamb so that the lamb is burning all the time. And the children wanting to wake up will not stumble over anything in darkness. Or the husband will not stumble over anything in darkness. Everything in the house is set in order. That's why it says a candle goeth not out by night. She lays her hand to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. What he's saying is, there are homes where the women, the wives, will know how to weave. They want to weave a cardigan, sweater, clothing, socks, whatever, for the little baby, for the children, even for the husband. They learn how to do some little, little things as a kind of labor of love for members of the family. She reaches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. If there are so many clothes, the family is no more using. The children have outgrown them. And the, the wife, the husband, uh, they have outgrown them. He looks for them and he gives them to the needy and to the poor. If there are books the children have outgrown. There are no more you see those books. Instead of just piling them there, she is the one that is very thoughtful and caring. And then he looks at the people and looks at the families of other people that still have needs of all these things and he gives some to them. She has the liberty in the family. 
she's not like a slave that is uh, you know acting with fear and acting with uh, a kind of trepidation can i do it what will the man say what will the husband say no not at all there's such liberty and freedom in that family that whatever the wife needs to take to take care of other people she does that without any fear in fact in verse 21 it says she's not afraid of the snow for her household for all her households are closed with scarlet all the household the husband is well dressed the children are well dressed and the children are well prepared for she maketh herself coverings of tapestry uh, her clothing is silk and purple her husband is known in the gates she beautifies the husband and she promotes and honors the husband her life is to be spent in making the husband respect and honored respected and honored in the society her husband is known in the gates when he seated among the elders of the land she maketh fine linen and selleth each and delivereth girdles unto the merchant strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come sisters are you there sisters i said are you there if you are not married yet the choice of your marriage of the husband will make you rejoice in time to come if you are married already whatever has serpent in the past and whatever water might have gone under the bridge from today your life will turn around your household conduct and character will turn around from today till tomorrow from this week till next week from next this month to next month from this year i'm talking to sisters to another year you will rejoice in time to come she opens her mouth with wisdom she doesn't just talk she doesn't just open the mouth she waits for the right time she waits to have the right word and when she opens her mouth she doesn't talk like a foolish person who has forgotten she's to build a family and she's tearing down with her words she opens her mouth with wisdom in her tongue is the law of kindness she looks well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Your children will bless you. When they grow older, they'll bless you with the works of their hand and with provision for you when you come to old age in Jesus' name. A husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. What that means is beauty, physical beauty, does not last. A lady that looks very beautiful miss community is the miss or the mistress of the community the most beautiful in the community when she turns 40 things are changing she turns 55 things are changing she turns 70 things are changing and the beauty is not like it was when you were 25 years of age if you marry just because of that you'll be disappointed i pray you'll not be disappointed in your family beauty is vain but a woman that fears the lord she shall be praised 
give her the fruit of her hands and let her let her own works praise her in the gates helpful supportive doing well doing good unto the husband the inner beauty of a virtuous wife point number two now the internal but bone of a vibrant husband internal but bone you see the husband must be able to stand straight and stand firm able to defend the wife protect the wife protect the children protect the family must be strong not a tyrant but strong to help strong to defend strong to uphold strong to encourage and such a husband must have backbone he doesn't expose that backbone just like we have backbone in our body and we don't tear our back open so people can see we have backbone we exhibit and demonstrate that backbone by what we do that we're able to stand erect that we're able to stand solid and stable when there is anything confronting the family that we don't run elter skelter internal but bone of a vibrant husband first peter chapter 3 verse 7 likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge you can do that and you're not feeling intimidated you're not feeling competitive you're not competing with your wife you are complimenting each other you dwell with them with the women with your wives according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife ah if i do that and i give honor to her she'll ride on me no not at all she'll respect you she'll take me for granted no not at all she will honor you you give honor to the wife and how do you honor the wife you take care of the wife and the way you speak to the wife looks like you're secured you see people who are not secured those are the people that easily get angry and they interpret everything the wife is doing to mean because she's working because she has a certificate because she has rich parents because she put part of the money down that we used to write in the house that's why she's behaving like this they misinterpret every action because they feel insecure a man with a backbone has a security and because of that security there is self-confidence and is able to give honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel and has been heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered your prayer will not be hindered brothers husbands your prayers will not be hindered now in Genesis chapter 20, the backbone. Genesis chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 7. Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. If thou, and if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die thou and all that are thine thou and all that are thine abimelech was the backbone of the family and if that backbone of the family took another person's wife he is not the only one that will suffer thou and all that are thine when you have pain at your backbone 
when you have disease in the backbone you are not able to bend you are not able to stand you're helpless even to yourself and you cannot help another one a person who has taken another man's wife because this one is beautiful if he's now to make restitution and let the woman go so that the whole family can have peace he has to be a man with a backbone the backbone of conviction look at verse 14 in verse 14 and abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them to abraham and restored him sarah his wife that man had a backbone internal backbone here is what the lord has commanded and whatever my kingdom will say, whatever my surrounding will say, whatever my community will say, I have backbone enough to carry out the word of God. Verse 17, so Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maid servants, and they bear children for the Lord at first closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. If any calamity has come on the family because of the action of the husband, and the Lord points it out now, like the message we're hearing. A man with backbone, a man with strength, inner strength, will not say, I will not do it now. I don't want my wife to say, uh huh, because of the message we heard on that Sunday. That's why he's doing it now. Abimelech had backbone, and he did what he ought to do so that he will be able to carry the family forward in health. He was the backbone of the family. We're looking at Genesis chapter 25, verses 20 and 21. Genesis chapter 25, verse 20. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, and sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. That's a man with backbone. There was no child in the family. And this went on, and it's getting to 20 years now after they had married. And eventually Isaac took hold of the horns of the altar and he personalized the problem. And he didn't say whether the husband or the problem was the, were with the wife or with the husband. That's not the problem. That, that's not a big deal. Whatever is the cause of that barrenness, Isaac acted as a man with solution. Somebody have been backbone. Isaac acted as a person that will turn the negative condition of the family around. That's a husband with backbone. You will have backbone. Every husband here, God will give you wisdom to solve the problems of the family in Jesus' name. You are no more trading blames and you are no more talking to each other. You are the cause of the problem and the cause of the problem. Let's leave all that alone. Let's have inner strength. You are having a strength. Inner backbone, inside internal backbone. You will have it in Jesus' name. We're looking at Numbers chapter 30. We're looking at verse 8. Numbers chapter 30. I'm reading from verse 8. But if her husband 
disallowed her on the day that he heard it then he shall make her vow which she vowed that which she uttered with her leaves wherewith she bound her soul of none effect and the Lord shall forgive her join that with verse 13 every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void that's the husband with backbone the wife is making a vow making a vow unto God and the husband is not acting uninterested uninvolved when that wife makes the vow and the husband hears it the husband with a backbone will evaluate that vow in line with God's ordained precept and principle in the family. And if the husband with a backbone who is not saying, that's her. If I talk now, it can generate problem. I know this kind of commitment, this kind of vow will land her in trouble Hell's challenge in the future. I will even affect the children, but what can I do? She's a woman of a strong mind. And once she makes up her mind to do anything, you cannot even question, you cannot correct. That man does not have a backbone. God said in the world that if your wife makes a vow, a commitment to God. Of course, if you can affect and influence the vow to God, a commitment to her family, a commitment to a friend, a commitment in the place of work, and now you hear it, and you see that this commitment will not help her or help you or help the family, the word of God says, if the husband says no, that vow, that commitment will not stand. But only men with backbone will say anything contrary to the vow, to the commitment, to the consecration that the wife has made. In Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, I read from verse 6. It says, Take ye wives and beget children, sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that she may be increased there and be not diminished. You will increase you will not diminish. I said you will increase, you will not diminish. The man, the husband, the father, that's always careful. The child is turning to 26, 27, 32, 33, 34, 35, and somebody comes to ask the hand, of the girl, of the lady, of the daughter in marriage. And she's always looking at their tribe, looking at their background, looking at their resources. And he's not allowing the daughter to pray. Always saying no, no, no. The marriage committee in the church, that's always saying no, no, no. That cannot be the will of God. While the other religious people are marrying four wives, five wives, seven wives, and they are bearing children, bearing children, and they are populating the whole nation. 
and while the other Christian denominations are releasing their daughters and uh, the ladies there to get married and get married and they're overpopulating the, uh, uh, the nation but this man without a backbone the backbone of faith and the backbone of foresight is always saying no and the marriage committee is a kind of limiting the marriages limiting the marriages they are not working by faith what will happen is the church will die out when the older ones when they are old and old and they have gone and because we're not obeying the word of God we're so much afraid we don't have backbone and we cannot stand with our young sons and daughters eventually will be diminished your family will not be diminished our church will not be diminished Look at verse 6 again. Take wives. You're old enough. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons. They're old enough to get married. And give daughters to your husbands. To husbands. Give your daughters to husbands. That they may bear sons and daughters. That ye may increase and you may not be diminished. I said, you'll not be diminished. And your sons and daughters who have married, and there's no a child yet, this day, the way is open. Childbearing will start in your families in Jesus' name. And you are fathers now, mothers now, very soon, Tell me very soon. Tell me very soon. You'll be grandfathers and grandmothers in Jesus' name. Verse 7, seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof ye shall have peace. Amen. Yeah. We're coming now to First Timothy chapter 5 verse 7 and verse 8. The internal backbone of a vibrant husband. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 7. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless, but if any provides not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You will not be an infidel. A husband with a backbone will always find ways to provide for the family. Legitimate ways. But my brother, if you are husband, you are on this job, and I see little difficulty there, a little challenge there, a little unpleasant thing on that job, you quit. I cannot walk that walk there again. Because it's affecting my personality. It's affecting who I am. They will not give me enough respect there. I quit. How are you going to provide for your family? I don't care about that. I quit that job. And then somebody helps you and you got another job. On that job, they have their principles of oppression. And you stay there again, you're not looking at the principles of oppression. You're looking at your personality. And somebody said something deliberately or maybe uh, unintentionally. And then you say again, I'm quitting. I am leaving. I cannot work there again. Where are you going to work? You don't have backbone. You're just running from here to there. 
You see, when you have backbone, you'll think of your family. You are the breadwinner. You must bring something home. You must educate your children. And you are, you are going to bear a little difficulty if you have backbone. What if your child go to, uh, goes to school and a child comes back home? Daddy, I cannot go to that school again. Why? A teacher spoke to me like this. I cannot endure that. I cannot bear that. How are you going to do? What if your daughter comes back home when she's learning something and then comes back home? I cannot stay there because they spoke to me like this. There is challenge everywhere. There are difficulties everywhere. And we need a job. We need backbone to be able to stay there and provide for members of our family. You'll provide. If you have lost your job because of not having backbone, I pray for you, you'll get a good job in Jesus' name. And you stay there as a husband, as a man, as a breadwinner that has backbone. Because if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith. You will not deny the faith. And it's worse than an infidel. You will not be like that in Jesus' name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 7. Reading from verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife as a married man. You have backbone, you've got a wife, that's enough. And you will not be looking here and there. A person that is looking here and there has forgotten why he got married. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Anybody married there? I said anybody married there? Where are they? God will bless your marriage. No impurity in your family. No fornication in your family. No heartbreak in your family in Jesus' name. But you'll be a man of self-respect. A man with a backbone. A person with a backbone is able to stand in front of his congregation. And he says like Samuel, Whose ox have I taken? Whose ass have I taken? Whose wife have I touched? Whose daughter have I touched? That man has backbone. I'm looking at people with backbone. And your backbone will remain strong in Jesus' name. And let me read that verse 2 again. Nevertheless, to avoid, tell me, but you know, there are some people that think it's not only I don't have problem of fornication and therefore I don't need to get married. Read the whole Bible. It's not good that the man will be alone. What does that mean? To avoid loneliness. Let every man have his own wife. To avoid insecurity. Let every man have his own wife to avoid backsliding. When your life is all alone and you have nobody to counsel you, nobody to relate with you, nobody to talk to you, to avoid backsliding, let every man have his own wife. You are reading in the newspapers, this one is depressed, that one is depressed, and that one committed suicide depression leads to suicide to avoid depression 
have somebody you can talk to have somebody you are married to have somebody you can relate ways and to avoid ultimate perdition let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband again let me talk to the marriage committee somebody is already 60 years of age she's a widow and then she comes to the marriage committee and says uh, I, I want to get married and I'm feeling led to so and so a widower the widower is 63 and uh, the widow is 60 or whatever age and uh, you know the marriage committee questioning uh, are you being tempted at your age do you want to have children at your age are you tem are you tempted to fornication at your age not really but i feel lonely not really but i feel all alone insecure and then to avoid insecurity to avoid loneliness to avoid depression and to avoid backsliding ultimately let each man every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband is that all right i said is that all right if we have been guilty because we've been thinking this one way and we now need to balance up everything i pray that god will make us to act right in jesus name did anybody say amen, amen. our daughters our sons our youths did you say amen along with the rest of us the Lord will give you happy homes. The Lord will give you a, a backbone in your family. Your families will be better than the families of the past generation. We're coming to point number three now. The inside bank of a visionary home. The inside bank of a visionary home. A bank is where you make deposits and withdrawals. In the family, we make deposits. You see, while we're together, we make deposits of love. So that when we're separated by work or by travels, even though you are alone, you are able to withdraw from the deposits of love we made in the bank of our family faith we make deposits of faith while we're together you're putting in your faith i'm putting in my faith my comments are comments of faith my utterances are utterances of faith and we're making deposits so that when any problem happens and we don't have a local pastor to pray for us we can withdraw from the bank of faith where we're deposited we have hope and we're depositing hope anything that happens our language is the language of hope anything that happens our language is the language of encouragement we're making deposits and making deposits and when any calamity happens or any accident we we'll draw out from the bank of hope that we have been depositing in the bank of joy joy we carry joy we exude joy we spread joy our atmosphere is filled with joy and we're not morose we're not uh, kind of uh, you know sad all the time there's joy 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 we deposit in our bank and then when there's any sin and you are all alone you can draw from that bank of joy we're giving support we deposit support and we give more than our children need we give more than our wives need we give more than our husbands need the deposit of support the deposit of a positive attitude 
positive attitude. And so when your wife is away, she can see your positive attitude on your face. Even when you are not physically there. And when there is need, she's drawing out of that bank of positive attitude. Intimacy. And the joy that comes through intimacy. You are together all the time when you are at home. And you talk together, you relate together, and you do everything together. That intimacy is a deposit in the bank in the home. So that whenever there is any physical distance between you, she goes to draw from that internal bank, inside bank, in the home. I pray that our home will have a bank that is overflowing surplus in Jesus' name. And then it's a visionary home. Having vision, a desirable future, helps us to make deposit. We're investing in our future. Husband and wife, they have vision for each other. The wife has vision for the husband. I have a vision for my husband to be strong, to be confident, to be bold, to be successful. I want my husband, I have a dream for my husband. He will live long and we're going to enjoy a fellowship together for a long time. And the wife, the husband has vision also for the wife. And the parents have vision for the children, and the children have vision for the parents. The inside bank of a visionary home. Without vision, let's look at Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. We're reading from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. The people that don't look at the future and the vision they ought to have. Any little problem will scatter them. Any little problem will bring them down. After all, they have no vision. They are even questioning, why am I alive? Why am I in this family? Why am I eating? Why am I healthy? What am I doing here? Because they don't have vision, they perish. They're easily overcome by difficulties and dangers. I look at your family as you are here. You'll have vision. Your family will not perish. What kind of vision do we have? Number one, vision for the household vision for the household. We're reading from Genesis chapter 15. I read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? That's his vision. He wanted a child. And at the slightest opportunity, he asked the Lord, and this still word of my house, is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou was given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Thou this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy bowels shall be thine heir. He had vision for the household. I'm going to ask you, what vision do you have for your household? Are you just living from day to day for yourself as the father of the family? 
for yourself as a mother in the family, for yourself as the father over the children. What vision do you have for your children? And how are you contributing to make that vision a reality? Number one, the vision for the household. Number two, the vision of hope. The vision of hope. Your family will not be hopeless. Your husband will not be hopeless. Your wife will not be hopeless. Our beloved, precious children will not be hopeless in Jesus' name. Vision of hope. In, in Romans chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 4. Reading from verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which is spoken, so shall the seed be. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through belief, but he was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform there will be a performance in your family number three a vision of health vision of health your husband will not die young your wife will not die young. Your parents will not die young. Your children will not die young. But you must have the vision, the vision. And you must do everything in line with that vision. And if any member of the family is doing anything contrary to that vision of health, You'll stand up. You'll have a backbone. You'll say, my dear, this is not right. This will injure your health. You have a vision of health. Acts chapter 27, verse 34. Acts chapter 27, verse 34. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. Take breakfast. Take your food. Don't go without having your breakfast because that does something to your metabolism, to your body. And so anything that will contradict your health and you are eating haphazardly and you are eating junk and you are not eating balanced diet, the vision we have for the family will not allow that. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. Prevention is better than kill. For there shall none, there shall not an air fall from the head of any of you. I see you now. I see. I will see you again. You will remain strong. You will remain healthy. And you remain vibrant in Jesus' name. Number four, the vision of happiness. The vision of happiness. You must have that happiness in the family. And you must have you must have the vision and contribute to that vision. You know, if you don't have the vision of happiness, you also make the home a desert. You make the family a desert. Whether the wife is happy or not, is not concerned. Whether the husband is happy or not, she is not concerned. Whether the children are happy or not, they are not concerned. You must have vision, and it's the vision of 
happiness. Proverbs chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. All that means says, if you understand what we call supplements, you eat and you take some medications, but this one is not that you are sick. It's called supplement, and you are taking it every time because it maintains your health and it supplies nutrients in the body that will not be there if you don't take them. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You're merry in your heart. You're happy in your heart. You have a vision that members of your family will light their candle from the source of your light and happiness will go through the whole body in Jesus' name. The vision of honor. The vision of honor. Honor your wife, honor your husband, have a vision. If you don't honor the man, who do you expect to honor him? If you downgrade him, if you trample on him, if you make him a nobody, in the place where he should have honor, when he goes outside, we cannot blame the outsiders if they don't honor him. Charity begins at home. I said charity begins at home. Honor begins at home. We're looking at First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Honor her. She's getting older. Honor her. She's not able to do what she had been doing 20, 25 years ago. Honor her, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. When your mother becomes old and weak and she cannot do for herself what she used to do for herself and for you, honor her. When your man becomes old, and he cannot do what he used to do. Honor him. And when it appears that they cannot produce like they were producing in the past, let's give honor to each other. The husband honoring the wife, the wife honoring the husband, the parents honoring the children, the children honoring the parents will honor each other and the honor will go round in Jesus name likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered your prayers will not be hindered the prayers you pray today will not be hindered. The prayers you pray any time, every time, will not be hindered in Jesus' name. The vision of helpfulness. The vision of helpfulness. You're helpful to each other. And you have that vision. And you are asking and you are seeking what can I do today to be of help? What can I do to my husband to be of help? What can I do to my wife to be of help? What can I do in the family to be of help? Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 10. For if the fall, verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor for if one if they fall the one will help up his fellow but woe unto him 
that is alone. You see that? When he falleth, for he has not another to help him up. To help him up. This is the decision of the Lord that marriage is to, to provide help. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him, and help suitable for him. In verse 20, And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. That's why God gave him Eve, God gave him a wife. Verse 24, Therefore shall a man leave father and mother and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they twain, they shall become one flesh. Number one, a vision for the household. Number two, a vision of hope. Number three, a vision of health. Number four, a vision of happiness. Number five, a vision of honor. Number six, a vision of helpfulness. Number seven, a vision of holiness. A vision of holiness. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. First Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 15, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Our wives will not die in childbearing. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If they continue, they, husband and wife, if they continue, they, the man and his woman, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness or sobriety, vision of holiness, your presence in the family, will make your family holier in Jesus' name. A safe child, a sanctified child, your presence in that family will make your parents holier, more sanctified in Jesus' name. The presence of the father in the family will make the wife and the children holier in Jesus' name. And the presence of the mother, the wife, will make the father and the children, the entire family, will make us holier in Jesus' name. She shall be saved in every situation. You will be saved in every situation. Insecurity will not catch up on you. There will be no accident in your family. There will be no accident of any type in the house, on the street, in the field, in the road, anywhere in Jesus' name. Like Abraham and Sarah came to a ripe old, old, old age, you will come to a ripe old age. Premature will be cancelled. Premature death will be cancelled. You will continue in faith, in charity, and holiness will sobriety. You must have vision of a brighter future. And that vision will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord. He has revealed so much to us today about our family. The virtuous wife, the vibrant husband, and the visionary home. Open your mouth, talk to the Lord, and pray that all these will become a reality in your life and a reality in your family.